Hey everyone, I am here tonight to talk to you about one of my favorite topics and that is goat meat. And um, also why goat meat does not have a great reputation in the United States. So um, I got an email today from someone who had a few questions about this because she's got a weather and she's thinking of butchering him, but she's got a couple questions before she goes forward with that. One of the things is that she tried goat curry in a restaurant and it was filled with a bunch of little tiny bones. And she was wondering why that was the case. And if we had tiny little bones in our stew meat and the answer is that no, we do not have tiny little bones in our stew meat. Our stew meat from our goats is just like the stew meat that you would get from a cow. Um, no bones. The reason that happens in a restaurant, and I learned this because in my University of Massachusetts class, all of my students have an assignment to make a dish with goat meat. And so I know the way that a lot of goat meat gets sold in stores because um, a lot of them wind up having to purchase like a chunk of meat. And uh, sometimes it includes ribs, spine, all of the parts of the body that have a lot of cartilage and a lot of really tiny little bones. And so what happens is, and this is unfortunate, we are not producing anywhere close to the amount of goat meat in this country that is purchased in this country. So the majority of goat meat in this country is imported. And it, a lot of the imported goat meat is very old. I, I know this because when people describe to me what the meat is like, it's tough, it's stringy, it tastes really awful. Um, I'm not even sure all of these are like weathers. I think some of them are intact bucks from the descriptions people have given me of the, of the meat they've purchased. So anyway, um, when you buy these really big um, chunks of meat that have bone in them and they're from old goats, the, what you have to do is you have to cook it. You have to stew it. You have to cook it low and slow in a pot full of water over a low heat. And what happens when you do that is number one, it, it tenderizes the meat so that the meat is not chewy. The meat is gonna actually be something that, that your customer can chew because this is like in a restaurant. And that's important because you want them to come back and buy it again. Um, but the other thing that happens is that the cartilage between those tiny little bones also winds up melting. And then all of those tiny little bones fall apart and they wind up in the meat. The exact same thing will happen to you if you cook a stew hen for too long. I did a video a week or two ago about cooking a stew hen. And I said in there that you, you want to stab it for the stew hen. You want to stab it um, starting at about two hours and see if you can pull the bone off. You pull the meat off the bone. If you can pull the meat off the bone, then you can taste it. And if it's tender, you're done cooking. Because if you let it keep cooking, all the bones are going to uh, fall apart. And, and there's, you have no idea how many tiny little bones there are in a chicken or in a goat or any other animal. Like there's a lot of little bitty bones. So you definitely don't want to cook anything too long in a lot of water because then that cartilage melts, which makes for amazing broth. That is fabulous, delicious broth. But then you wind up with those tiny little bones in your mixed in with your meat. You can't pick them out because you can't really see them because they look so much like the meat. So if you want to make a bone broth, that's why you really you need to use a mesh strainer to um, strain the broth after you make it. Um, so there is no reason that so if you are making, you know, if you're growing your own goat and you're taking them to a reputable processing place they are going to cut the meat off the bone and it's just going to be like a, like they were cutting the meat off of the bone on a beef same thing is looks it looks the same it's the same experience in terms of like when you're eating it there's not a lot of little bones in it um but the other thing too is that a restaurant wants to get the most bang for their buck ha ha cute little pun there um so you know they Plus, they don't want to take the time to cut the meat off the bone. So um, they throw all of that into the pot. And there's probably some chefs that work with that that feel like they want that broth that's got the dissolved cartilage in it because it's tastier. 
and it is. So, um, so there's a lot of reasons why that she had that experience when she had the goat in a restaurant and there's no, you're not going to have that experience if you're doing it at home. That's the fantastic thing about growing your own meat is that you've got control over what you get. So, you know, we don't eat chops, so we don't tell them to make chops, you know, cause you can have goat chops just like you can have lamb chops. I also don't eat roasts, leg roasts. So we don't do those pretty much whenever we have a goat butchered, um, we have all of it just basically either cut up into chunks of stew meat that we use in a variety of dishes or ground. And we, again, we use that in a variety of dishes. We have make like a goat herds pie, like shepherd's pie, but we use goat meat. We've got an Indian recipe. It's actually in that book. Raising goats naturally. There's a there's a goat um, recipe in there that uses um, some Indian spices. It's really good and sweet potatoes. Um, so your goat meat is going to be great if you have complete control of the process from uh, beginning to end. Buying it it gets trickier. Um, so the other thing too I wanted to mention um, because she said she had a bad experience um, with lamb and she wanted to know if goat was going to taste like that. I personally feel like our goat and our lamb taste very similar. And that is because basically they're all, they're all grass fed. Um, the goats that we butcher are basically weathers that have been, they were born in the spring and then they've really had nothing but pasture and mom's milk for their whole life. Um, so there isn't, um, and then the same thing with our lambs, our lambs are 100% grass fed. They are never fed any grain. So when you get a lot of the lamb that you get at the store, um, unless it says grass fed, it's going to be grain fed and lamb by nature is very fatty and grain fed is going to be even fattier. There's an old farmer live, lives near us and he used to come over all the time and tell me that my fat were not, my sheep were not fat enough. <laughs> he said that he needed jiggle when they run across the pasture um, and that grass fed lambs not worth a lick. You need to feed them some grain so that they'll jiggle when they run across the pasture. And it's kind of, I think it's kind of ironic because we've had so many people who've tried our lamb and said, wow, this is the only lamb I've ever had that I like. And I really think it's because most of the lamb is just so fatty and um, the smell of lamb fat is, is not a pleasant smell. So I don't, I really don't think I would like um, fat lamb either. Um, goat meat, on the other hand, is very lean. Goat meat, the cholesterol level of goat meat is in between dark meat and white meat on a chicken. So cholesterol of goat meat is lower than dark meat on a chicken, but it's a little bit higher than white meat on a chicken. And it is very, very low fat. It's, um, I think it's the leanest, just about the leanest meat you can get. And lamb is one of the highest fat meats you can get. So there's a huge difference between goat meat and lamb meat. So don't assume that just because you've had lamb meat and didn't like it, that you won't like goat meat. Um, I, I really feel like everybody should probably try butchering one of their goats to see if they like it. Because what I said to this person is that there's probably nothing in your area that you can buy that is going to taste like your goat meat. And again, we've had people say the same thing to us. People who buy goat meat from us have said it's the best goat meat they've ever had anywhere. Um, and I really think it's, you know, because first of all, they're young. We're selling them, you know, when they're like six to nine months old and there is no magical age. You just butcher them whenever you think they're big enough to butcher. That was another question she had. Someone had given her this very rigid guidelines. You have to do it when they're nine months old. Um, no, you don't. We butchered a six month old Nigerian dwarf one time. We had a bunch of weathers that year. He weighed 51 pounds live at six months of age. And so we went ahead and butchered him and my husband did it. We didn't take him to the locker because we were just doing the one. So we didn't want to take him by himself. Cause that would be sad to make him go away by himself. Um, so we just did the one and he had 51, it was 51 pounds live weight. 
And my husband just cut all the meat off of the bone. And we got about, I think the, I think the hanging weight was like 30 pounds. And then all of the meat that he cut off the bones was another fifth was 15 pounds of just meat. And then we used the bones to make broth. So the bones don't go to waste either. And some of the bones we um, fed to the dogs, but you only feed those raw. You don't give them cooked bones because those are the ones that splinter. Um, and then, um, so then when it comes to, so then her last question was if it was really financially feasible to butcher this weather because they don't have a lot of pasture. So they have to feed a lot of hay and she didn't tell me what her hay costs. So I really can't comment on that. But the other thing is, um, that honestly, I believe that the meat we produce is priceless. There is, there's no place that I can go to buy the meat that is going to be like the meat that we have. And the other great thing is that I know the whole history of it. So I know that, you know, this meat came from animals that um, had wonderful lives. They have never had any drugs. They um, have never had any kind of genetically modified feed because they've been on pasture and mom's milk for their whole life. So that to me is priceless. And in our case, it really doesn't wind up costing us much because they're on pasture. So, you know, if, if you want to start figuring out like, well, how, what was the value of the milk they drank that I could have drank or used to make cheese or whatever, you could do all kinds of math all day long. <laughs> um, trying to decide if it's financially worth it to you. But to me, it's psychologically worth it, mentally worth it, because I'm getting such a superior product to anything that I can purchase at any price. And um, I've never seen goat at Whole Foods, but when I go up to the suburbs, I always check the meat case. And, you know, I know the price of lamb that I see in there is just mind blowing. So, um, you know, like 12 to $19 a pound. So I feel like, wow, we are really doing great. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're saving a lot of money and getting what I feel like is a superior product. So if you guys have any other questions <clears throat> about goat meat, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. So if you guys have any other questions about goat meat or raising Nigerian dwarfs, um, for me, just feel free to post in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Have a great day. Bye.